Welcome to your weekly airplane news update. This is the week of August 2nd, 2021. And I want to mention something because last week I think I made a mistake and I said we were in 2023 or some weird year. So <laughs> I must have been tired. It is still 2021 as we speak. But this week we got some interesting topics. The first one is the return of the Jetpack Man. And we've talked about the Jetpack Man in the past uh, near LA. Looks like he's back. This is the third time. So we'll talk about what happened. We'll talk about a story that has been developing over the last couple of weeks. And we've mentioned this several times, but uh, the, the FAA has been in a big battle with pretty much the entire flight training industry, uh, putting some not new requirements because they can't really do that, but uh, they put out some explanation of rules that have been creating some waves. And uh, out of this process, there's a loadout process. We talked about it last week. We're going to talk about it some more because uh, there's an update from the FA administrator. We'll talk about a Black Fly EV Tall, electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. This was featured at Sun and Fun, which is going on right now. And we'll talk about it because it's kind of an interesting design. And we'll talk about a new app that was released at Sun and Fun called Flyerware Aviator. If you're familiar with Flyerware, well, you'll be familiar with this app. So let's get to it. First thing this week, Jetpack Man is back near LAX. A couple months ago, I think it was at the end of last year, probably early this year, uh, there was a report of this person on the jetpack that was flying at pretty high altitude in the final corridor for LAX. It was reported by two different uh, airlines and then a couple months later, a couple weeks later, it was reported and a picture was taken by uh, a flight training flight that was in the area. And now he's back or she's back. And uh, it, it was reported 15 miles east of LAX at an altitude of 5,000 feet AGL above ground level. Reported by a 747 pilot that was on the way to LAX. And, uh, and, and the radio is actually pretty funny. The, the radio frequency, you can find it on YouTube. Uh, it basically had a, a discussion saying, hey, the jetpack man is back. Uh, can you see him? And then they say, uh, nope, no, we don't have uh, Iron Man in sight. <laughs> so conversation was kind of interesting. Uh, a lot of people are speculating about what this actually is. Actual jetpacks are far and few between. There's not a whole lot of them out there. And that leads many people to think that it's actually a UAS that's disguised as a jetpack. So, uh, you know, when in doubt, if you don't know what it is that's flying, it's probably a UAS. I'm being sarcastic, obviously. Uh, we do fly a lot of drones here at Pilot Institute, but uh, it feels like uh, everything that's reported flying up there is, uh, is a UAS. Next thing is kind of a, a serious story, and this is something that's been developing over the last couple of weeks, like I mentioned in the, uh, in the intro. But the FAA has been making uh, new uh, explanations of rules. And the most recent one was the fact that in order to provide flight training in certain categories of aircraft, you needed to have a special permission. That special permission is called a LODA. And, uh, and if you want more information about this, we talked about it last week quite at length. The downside with the LODA is that it's a special requirement that you need to apply for with the FAA. And the problem is that if everybody who flies in a special category aircraft has to fill out this paperwork, it's going to take forever in order to get approval. And that's what the AOPA and other big organizations have been complaining about is the fact that this is going to be a, a, a paperwork nightmare if they want to get approved. And the AOPA even said that this is going to force people to basically fly illegally because they have to go through all these hoops. The FAA administrator talked about this this week at Hoshkosh, and um, unfortunately what he had to say was not great because he's basically saying that it's going to take up to four years in order to make regulation changes that would relieve people from having to write a LODA in order to do fly instruction in these type of aircraft. Because the FAA putting out an explanation of the rule like they did for this specific regulation has completely changed the way that people are looking at flight training in a certain way. And now people are saying, well, what else can the FAA do if that's what they did with this? How much can they change without really going through a process of changing regulation? This is the same thing that we kind of see with the, the drone world uh, sometimes, you know, when, when we have uh, changes and, and, and when, well, we end up with what feels like new regulation when no regulation has been approved uh, prior to that for the FAA to put in place. 
All right, I'm going to move to the next topic, which is uh, again related to Oshkosh, uh, EAA Air Venture, which is going on this week. There is this EVTOL design, EVTOL, electric, vertical, and takeoff and landing aircraft. The, these are the aircraft that you see that take off kind of like a, a quadcopter, like a drone, and then eventually transition into a forward flight. This uh, design, this Blackfly EV Tall, is really interesting. It's got a completely different design, and it's, it's been seen flying around Oshkosh. They did a demo flight. Uh, apparently, it's been flying for quite a while. They said they've, they've logged 35,000 miles in 4,300 plus flights, and uh, this thing can cruise at 60 miles an hour. The company that makes it, uh, Opener Aero, they said that they will be selling 25 of these aircraft this fall. And uh, obviously, these are designed to carry people to go from places from point A to point B. Uh, we've seen other companies, we've reported on other companies doing the same thing. Uh, and, uh, and this is uh, an industry that's growing pretty quickly. So it's just interesting to see this design, uh, a mix of uh, Airplane, traditional airplane that we see typically at Oshkosh at, at EA Air Venture, and then this kind of design. I think it's uh, it's an interesting mix between the two. Last thing this week is a new app from FlightAware. Now, if you're not aware of FlightAware, FlightAware is this company that creates tracking. They basically track any flights across the world. Uh, every time there is a an airplane accident or a crash, uh, typically you can go to FlightAware and you can see the information. Now, this app is designed to track uh, piston aircraft using ADS-B data. This is more of a, a personal tracker, if you want. It has the ability to send updates, to send a alerts to somebody who may be waiting for you on the ground. You're flying your aircraft and somebody's picking you up at the airport, then you can send them updates every 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever you want, and then they get an update. If you get diverted, if you get slowed down because of the wind, whatever it is, then they're going to get an update and know exactly when you'll get there. Uh, there is a premium that comes with the app if you want to pay for that. Uh, gives you uh, weather, map layers, surface vis visualization, scheduling stuff at FBOs, and then the ability, like I said, to do uh, ETAs that can be sent to people uh, during the flight. So just an interesting update from FlightAware. They're a pretty popular uh, website, and uh, I think it kind of makes sense for them to get into that uh, sort of personal app, if we want to call it that way. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's all I have. Like, subscribe, leave your comment, and uh, I will see you guys next week.